I am therapist and holistic nutritionist Jazz Robbins and welcome to week eight. As you know, we've been talking about some mental health issues that kids deal with, that adolescents deal with, that teens deal with, and we're having conversations that just don't get had enough. I am so thrilled to be on this journey with you. I'm not your therapist, but I'm here to hopefully give you some information, give you some insight, and give you some love. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. I urge you and encourage you to go back and watch the previous segments so that you get all of this amazing information. I don't want you to miss out on a thing. As you know, Grace Gostad has released new music. The album is titled Black Box, and this week we got Vaccine for Sympathy. My favorite lyric in the song is probably the title lyric, just a vaccine for sympathy. This song tackles bullying, and when I hear that lyric, for the first time, it just made me pause and question, what might this lyric actually be saying? The term vaccine because of COVID has just gone all over and through, and we're all hyper aware of what that word means, right? Vaccine. It makes our bodies immune to a particular thing. Why would we want to be immune to sympathy? Well, let's have this conversation. This week, I wanna to talk to you about the bullied and the bully. When we think about bullying, TV shows of yesteryear would depict it as shoving a kid in a locker or athletes putting non-athletes in a trash bin or mean girls spouting mean things to other girls on the schoolyard. Yeah, that's bullying, sure. And it's bigger than that. And sometimes if grown-ups, if adults, they're not paying attention, they can miss the more subtle kinds of bullying. There's relational bullying. That's when a person or a group tries to sabotage the social standing of another individual. There's sexual bullying. That's when a person or a group of individuals, they're name calling and they're picking on an individual maybe because of their physical appearance, their level of sexual activity or sexual inactivity. There's prejudicial bullying, where an individual is being picked on or ridiculed because of their race, because of their ethnicity, because of their gender identity, because of their sexual identity. There's even bullying that absolutely looks like the verbal and the physical, but what about when it doesn't have words that you can hear? What about cyberbullying? When individuals are being threatened, harassed, and embarrassed on the internet and through social media. It's disgusting, it's ugly, it's hurtful, and it can keep kids from even wanting to engage socially. It can keep kids from wanting to show up at school for wanting to show up in their lives because of the level of hurt and the pain and embarrassment. It's so cruel and it's so isolating. And the scars that are left from bullying, they last a lifetime. It can take forever to get back to the person that you used to be before you were attacked by bullies and it feels awful. And for the person going through it, you don't even know where the heck to start. How do I heal from this thing when I've been called awful names by the people who are supposed to love me and who are supposed to support me? It's awful. And I hurt with you and I hurt for you. I wonder though if we can pause for a moment to wonder what on earth made these bullies so mean, so hurtful. 
How did that happen? How do we have a single person or a group of individuals who are being so nasty and so ugly to another person or another group of individuals? How did that happen to young kids? Hurt people hurt people. It's unfortunate, but it's true. And I don't say this because I'm siding with any bullies. But if we can just pause and pull back for a moment, what I do know, and we've talked about it in previous segments, a lot of times when someone has been so beaten down by their parents, or they've been so beaten down by their peers, they flip the script and they become the bully that they hate, that they despise. They're so filled with anger, and we've talked about anger, right? They're so filled with anger that they retaliate on whomever they can get their hands on, whomever they can get their words on. And it's not because they like bullying, it's because they're hurting and they're suffering. So when I talk to you about healing for the bully and the bullied, my ask for all of us is that we don't meet hostility with hostility. I won't even go so far as to say, please be compassionate to the bully, because listen, that's a hard ask. That's a very, very hard ask. But I will at least ask that you pause and that you don't meet that hostility with more hostility. Listen, I wanna say one more thing. I completely understand and recognize that as a person being bullied, it is hard to come forward and tell anyone that you're experiencing the things that you're experiencing. It's hard to go to your parents. It's hard to go to your teacher. It's hard to go to the principal. It's hard. It's embarrassing. And you don't even know what words to say. And there's a big fear that it will get worse because the people that you go to may not do anything. I totally get it. What comes to mind for me, I remember living in New York and on the subways, there was this sign that said, see something, say something. For this situation to get better, bystanders play an incredibly important role. Incredibly important. For those of you who see it, say something. You have so much power, so much power, and your power can do so much good for somebody else who doesn't have the power to say something in that moment. So I'm asking parents, I'm asking teachers, I'm asking friends, when you see it, say something. Whether that's to the principal, to the assistant principal, to someone who can do something about that situation, I need you as bystanders not to stand silent. This is not the time. My ask for you bystanders, See something, say something. Exercise the power that you have because other people are counting on you in this moment. If you're currently being bullied and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, talk to someone, reach out to someone. If you've looked within and you can hear the sound of my voice, and you're connecting with that bully persona and you feel like that might be you and you don't want that to be you, talk to someone. Reach out to someone that you know, someone that you love, someone that you trust, someone that you feel would understand and would give you genuine love, care, compassion, and assistance. If you don't have that person in your life, reach out to Teen Line. T 
Teen Line is a hotline that is for teens, run by teens. It's the very hotline that I worked at when I was in high school. The folks answering the phone calls, they're trained to help you through this moment of crisis and to connect you with further resources so that you can sustain that help. If you only reach out because I've asked you to, do it for me. But whether you're the bully or the bullied, I don't want you to sit with that pain. I don't want you to suffer in silence. I want you to take the first step to get the help that you need. Now, let's talk about our tool for our toolbox this week. This week, the senses are hearing and touching. So, in terms of hearing, I want you to come up with a list of three sounds that calm you or energize you or evoke a positive feeling in some way. Listen, you can go to YouTube and type in ocean waves and there's eight hours of it. Birds singing, there's eight hours of it. Holiday music, that's mine, there's eight hours of it. Maybe you've got a favorite artist. Listen to that, come up with at least three. Five would be fantastic. But I'm looking for sounds that are pleasing to you. And in terms of touch, that could be comfy pajamas, it could be a cozy blanket, it could be fuzzy slippers, it could be your cat or your dog. What are things that when you touch them, they're calming, they're energizing, or they just evoke a positive feeling within you? Put those in your toolbox. Use them as often as you can, as often as you need to. I'm Jazz Robbins, therapist and holistic nutritionist, and I want you to know that you are worthy, you matter, and you deserve to experience the full awesomeness that your life has to offer. I hope you'll join me here next time so that we can continue this conversation. But until then, bye-bye.